Hi everyone, so this is going to be a really short video uh, partially because again uh, it's a, like only 9 minutes limit uh, but I wanted to actually go back to the topic of uh, spiritual abuse and how it actually really really messes up your life and your whole system of like coping uh, with other things in life so uh, I think that you all have no, uh, those who have been following me know that I actually went through some some pretty traumatizing uh, uh, episode in my life with uh, you know encountering narcissists that was like six or seven years ago and uh, yeah and then it's not just one narcissist because once you know one of them you know the rest like their, their circle of them okay uh, the one thing is that this was in fact just like in the in the light of this event this this series of episodes uh, they were linked or basically compounded by my past experience of spiritual abuse. So uh, I wanted to talk a little bit more about how spiritual abuse actually is really, really, it's something very painful, especially in the com certain communities. I know that certain communities, uh, certain individuals actually find a sense of purpose in religion and faith. But when the faith itself becomes very controlling with certain people, who claim that they are, you know, that the, the only anointed messengers of God, or that only that particular text, that particular verse, and those things, the version of it, the dogmatic confession, becomes everything. Okay, that's when it actually becomes control and abuse. So, uh, okay, I just wrote something on my uh, Facebook and my Instagram, just to talk a little bit more about how this is being uh, done. And I wanted to actually go back to the whole th uh, episode I was talking about last time in the past, about how the, um, you know, like, particularly that like Calvinist or Bible Presbyterian, uh, or even Presbyterian uh, denomination uh, congregations, um, how they actually make use of certain beliefs, certain Calvinist beliefs like uh, predestination, election, okay, and uh, yeah, and also pre predestination in the sense of double predestination that God has actually uh, chosen before all time uh, who will be saved and who will be damned okay so basically the, um, the, the, the the whole thing this election is irrespect, irrespective of your works so you could be the you know the so called uh, doing the best things the best good deeds but as long as you are not elected it doesn't matter okay and then again uh, if you are doing evil things uh, but if you are elected, then therefore you will still be safe no matter what. Um, it doesn't make sense, okay. But uh, this is I'm talking more about this. Uh, I know this is going to trigger some people because some people are really really devoured Calvinists. But uh, the thing is this: I, I don't really I don't really care because I think that they are very abusive people, and uh, based on my experience. But uh, I want to just read something out from my uh, post, okay. So let me just read this. While we all have freedom to choose our beliefs including our faith okay no on no account should any religious institution ever be given power to control our lives to the point of damaging our health and psyche so there is now an emerging trend in christian churches and i would say evangelical circles towards demonizing psychology and psychiatry as well as mental health care workers by restricting attending members and believers from having any access to these services. So when people actually require psychological as well as psychiatric intervention to prevent any tragedy, such as self-harm or even, you know, like suicide, um, all these institutions can do after the matter of fact, after right after it has happened, is to just lament and cry over spilled milk. Okay. And in some worst case scenarios, refuse to officiate at the funeral of the deceased. Even if we take aside the judgmentalism and self-righteousness of these institutions and their preachers and attending members who blindly go along with the flow, the fact still remains that they hinder the suffering person from having any form of access to mental health care services, claiming that the depression can be prayed away with and that they were not healed Okay, of that depression because of their sins and wrongdoings. That only leads the person to dig deeper into a compensation complex. Okay, what do I mean by that? A compensation complex of trying to do more things, more good works, okay, 
uh, or more works of obedience to make up and atone for the wrongdoing that's being suggested. So uh, often, this is in mistaken conviction that doing so will expi expiate, okay, will purge the sins and then get rid of the depression. Okay, in some cases, the problem is actually further compounded by the institution's damaging indictment of the suffering, the suffering person as never having been good enough, okay, uh, which actually deepens the problem by creating further guilt in that person, okay. So these churches and religious institutions should really not have hindered people from seeking psychological help in this case. So in a lot of uh, evangelicals uh, and the circles they hang around, there is also the prevalent assumption that if you go to find a psychiatrist or psychologist, you are committing a sin because you are not trusting enough in God. Okay, And that if you really do trust enough in God, you will not go to psychologists or psychiatrists as emotional healers and therapists. See the circular reasoning behind such a thing? You are seeming to go to a therapist because you don't have enough faith. And if you have enough faith, you will not go to a therapist. See the circular logic? Okay. So, um, all that talk of pray away the blues actually constitutes a form of scapegoating and gaslighting of the victim to make him or her the one to blame for the depression and the underlying trigger events which are actually very often external to the victim. Okay, so uh, I know this will sound, it's a very long, you know, diatribe against certain spiritual communities which try to use spiritual control or spiritual coercion. But I know this because I have lived through it, okay? I was hindered from seeking psychologists because as they said, Psychologists use very worldly and satanic methods to make, bring me away from God. Okay, uh, you know one thing, if the psychologist or the social worker had not intervened, you wouldn't see me now. Okay, uh, because when I needed help, what did the church do? They didn't just close a blind eye. They closed both eyes. Okay, they don't see your pain. They don't see your trauma, they don't hear it, and neither do they talk about it. You know, it's like, see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil, nothing. You don't exist, okay? This is not the way to go about doing things, okay? Um, I know that because, you know, now that I'm actually like working towards uh, becoming a therapist, okay, I'm planning to go back and study. Uh, at least in the near future, within the next few years, I realized this uh, without any kind of empathy, you know, without learning to see, to hear, to feel the suffering of someone else, without that kind of being, being, being trauma informed, we cannot be a good healer. Okay? And uh, all the more, you know, you claim to be a, when you claim to be a hospital for sick souls. You should not be doing these kind of things. Okay. So anyway, uh, that's it for now. I'm going out to just log off because it's actually pretty late. Uh, I hope everyone has a good night. Okay. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.